folks, and uh, thank you for watching another one of my first time videos. Uh, we're going to have a look at a different aircraft today, this one being the uh, Airbus A340-500. Uh, this aircraft is equipped with Rolls-Royce Trent 500 series engines, putting out uh, 62,000 pound-feet of thrust, roughly. The aircraft was never very popular with the airliners, and it was well known to be a very thirsty aircraft and also a very underpowered aircraft. Uh, the aircraft doesn't do too bad if you're not carrying much fuel, but when you get into a heavier load of fuel, it uh, becomes a very lethargic aircraft and uh, have a difficult time getting up to a significantly high altitude. I'm going to uh, do a flight today from uh, San Francisco International Airport to uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. This is a relatively short flight for this aircraft, and I've only loaded a small amount of fuel as a result. Let's hop in the cockpit and have a look around, and we'll get our flight underway. So here we are in the cockpit of the uh, A340-500, and this cockpit is not my work. It was created by originally by Ken Mitchell, and someone else uh, swapped out the original CRT displays for LCD displays. I have made some changes to it as well, and I'm going to go over those changes with you. But first, I want to get the system up and running so that I can better demonstrate the changes I've made. I don't have any fuel in the auxiliary tank, so I don't have to turn on the heaters for those. Okay, so at this point I've got everything running except for the engines, uh, the APU is running. I'm going to have a look around here. I've installed a GNS530 GPS system. Newest form of GPS for uh, Bikesim 2004. We have a pushback and taxi gauge. In between the two, uh, there's a ground proximity warning system. Uh, this alerts you to any uh, unusual flight characteristics, such as banking too steeply, uh, descending too rapidly. Too close to the ground, you forgot you put your landing gear down, those kinds of things. Great asset. We also have a heads up display. I mainly use that at night for nighttime landings. Cockpit is also equipped with a uh, flight management computer, and uh, for those that like it, this is a uh, great little tool. I find it's a little bit more work than what it's worth, so I don't bother. But everybody has their own choices. We also have uh, AI radar showing traffic in the area, and there is a little bit of traffic in the uh, San Francisco Basin today. I'm going to go ahead and start up the engines. All four engines are running at this point. I'm going to contact air traffic control for clearance for our flight plan. Before I contact ground, I just want to explain what I did here. I set the uh, initial altitude at 7,000 feet as given by air traffic control. My initial climb rate is 1,000 feet per minute. Uh, this aircraft is very long, and you don't want to do a very uh, steep takeoff. I'm going to make a very gentle lift off the runway, and uh, all that to do, you get enough altitude to increase your climb rate. Set the uh, auto throttle at 240 knots indicated airspeed. Obviously, we want to obey the uh, 250 knot speed limit under 10,000 feet. Finally, I set the barometric pressure to 29.88 inches of mercury, the stick which we use for uh, measuring altitude under uh, 18,000 feet. Let's contact the ground.
taxi two and hold short of runway one left using taxiway Alpha Golf Hotel. Contact tower on one two zero point five when ready. Taxi two and hold short runway one left via taxiway Alpha Golf Hotel, Singapore seven eight two. Okay, so we got our uh, clearances here. I'm just going to set up my uh, pushback gauge here. And a little bit of guesswork on my part in regards to this. I'm just going to do a 20 second pushback, a 90 degree turn to the left. Hopefully that'll put us in a good position to taxi. Ground from cockpit. Go ahead. Ready for pushback. Okay, steering pin inserted. Release brakes. Brakes released. Okay, push them back. Parking brake. Parking brakes are set. Prepare for taxi and signal on left side. Okay, towing system removed and hand signal on left side. I'm not going to use the taxi gauge for taxiing right yet. I'm in a bit of a tight spot here with a very large aircraft. Because the engines are so heavy on this aircraft, uh, aircraft has a tendency to roll a little bit when you make a right hand turn. Or left, or left hand turn. You gotta be very careful of your uh, ground speed when you're taxiing with this aircraft. If you go too fast, you'll find the uh, body rolls a little bit and uh, you run the risk of uh, breaking the ground with the, your wing tip if you're not too careful. Generally speaking, you don't want to exceed 10 knots taxiing. And on a 90 degree turn, that's what we have coming up here. You don't want to be any more than 8 knots. an art form to taxi with this aircraft because of its length it's very difficult to uh, judge your terms. You got to remember you're sitting well ahead of the nose wheel. As a result you kind of got to overshoot your turn a little bit. And it looks like we're out over the grass here but it's actually uh, the front of the aircraft is over the grass but the nose wheel is still on the taxi but Tell them they can my good old time uh, taxiing with this aircraft because of the amount of uh, body roll involved. You don't want to go very fast. I'm up to 15 knots now, which probably m most you'd ever go on this aircraft, and uh, the only reason I got that high is because of the. Uh, momentum I had coming out of that turn. This is not an aircraft for, the, uh, for a beginner. It's a very difficult aircraft to fly. Not too bad once you get used to it. Uh, a little bit tricky to master.
as far as I was hatching, I would say more than anything, it was so long. Hard to judge your uh, distance. You might notice a little bit of shutter in the video here. I have a lot of software running. Uh, I have the flight simulator running. I also have uh, Active Sky running weather. And uh, I'm using OBS to record this video, which is pretty resource hungry as well. I also have third party scenery installed for uh, San Francisco. Some uh, scenery enhancements for also in texture so uh, it will load on the system when I'm, re I'm recording a video it's not too bad when I'm not recording I get about 60 frames per second in the air go 40 on the ground I'm setting my flaps here for takeoff and uh, set those to position 3 or 18 degrees remember when you're taking off with this aircraft the aircraft is very long so um, once you get airborne you don't want to make a very steep climb you want to make a very shallow climb until you get some altitude once you get some altitude underneath you then you can uh, increase your climb rate that's the reason I have the climb rate on the uh, autopilot set to 1,000 feet per minute I use auto throttle for takeoff from most aircraft, but in this one I'm going to use full thrust. We've got some wire on the far end of the runway that I don't want to get into. And usually rotate around 155 to 165, depending on the amount of fuel you have. The more fuel, the uh, faster you have to be when you rotate. And keep a very, very shallow lift up. Or not climbing very steeply at all. Back the gear. Use the altitude hold and the auto throttle. Singapore 782, contact bay departure on. Now that we're airborne and got some altitude underneath us, we can increase our climb rate. Track the flaps to 12 degrees, and we're going to keep them at 12 degrees until I get up to 10,000 feet. Turn by heading 030, proceed on course, climb and maintain 7,000. Pacific Context 083. Bay departure, Singapore 782 is at 1,300, climbing 7,000. Singapore 782, A departure, Roger, altimeter 29 or 88. Singapore 782. Turn right, heading 030, proceed on course, climb and maintain 7,000. Bay departure, world travel 3334, is at 1,600, climbing 13,000. World travel 3334, bay departure, roger, current altimeter 29 or 89 or... Turn right, heading 030, resume on navigation, climb and maintain 7,000. Singapore 7. World travel 3334, turn right heading 060, proceed on course, climb and maintain 13000, Pacifica 6083, turn right heading 060, Singapore 782, traffic is 9 o'clock, 3 miles at 4400, Boeing 737, report limit site, world travel 3334, turn right heading 090, climb and maintain 13000, Singapore 7. Right heading 090, climb and maintain 13000. World travel 3334.
It would be uh, important to note where the purpose of this video is not to be a perfect uh, pilot. I'm not trying to be very down the money with everything here. I'm more or less just testing the aircraft uh, flight dynamics that I've written, make sure it's flying as it should, and looking for areas where there's room for improvement. World Travel 3334, contact Travis approach on 119er point niner. One one niner point niner. World travel three 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 four. The critics out there will notice I didn't turn my landing lights on when I took off. No big deal. Not going to be the end of the world for this video. One thing I did notice is when I took off, I got a little bit over two hundred and fifty knots here, but it quickly uh, recovered. I had to make a note of that when we're taking off next time. I think the trick there is uh, once you get airborne, you have to be pretty quick at uh, engaging the auto throttle. Singapore. It was a little bit late doing that. Contact Travis approach on one one niner point niner. One one niner point niner for Singapore seven eight two. Travis approach Singapore seven eight two is climbing through five thousand eight hundred for seven thousand. Singapore seven eight two. Travis approach, Roger, altimeter 2, niner 8, niner. Kind of unusual to have your flaps set at 12 degrees uh, all the way up to 10,000 feet, but uh, keep in mind this aircraft is a very long aircraft, and uh, if I were to retract the flaps at a low speed, uh, I would have a very high angle of attack, and it would make it more difficult to uh, increase my speed once I get above 10,000 feet. Kind of a different uh, flying technique than one you might be used to in a smaller aircraft. locked onto my flight plan here, so the uh, onboard computer will be uh, navigating from here on in. One thing I can't emphasize enough is uh, just keep in mind as I'm doing this video, this is a, a beta flight dynamic file for this aircraft, and uh, I'm still working out some of the finer kinks in it, but uh, by and large, it's, it's pretty close to the final product, just a little bit of tweaking here and there. Notice, uh, I said earlier I only have a light load of fuel on a, a light load in this aircraft is still 135,000 pounds of fuel. feet here now, so I'm going to begin retracting the flaps and increasing my speed. Set that at 315 knots. Now, if I were flying at maximum takeoff weight here, uh, you would have to retract the flaps fully to gain airspeed. I'm flying right here with a low amount of fuel, so I'll get up to around 260 knots before I retract fully. And 
the aircraft is gaining speed nicely. We're up to 284 knots, indicated airspeed, and it is climbing. Maintaining 1,500 feet per minute. Outside of the aircraft. Not a bad looking aircraft. Uh, the, the model itself was originally written for AI use, but uh, as you can see, it's very, very, very viable. No problem with flying the aircraft. For uh, my own interest here, I'm just going to increase my climb rate just a little bit up to 1800 feet per minute. I want to see if I maintain airspeed. If I was flying with full load of fuel, I wouldn't be able to do this, but I'm flying light today, so I should be able to increase that climb rate a little bit. Watching your airspeed here and make sure it doesn't drop off. Looks like the engine are having no trouble maintaining 1,800 feet, so uh, keep this climb right as long as we can. Once we get about 24,000, we'll probably see the airspeed start to drop off. While we're flying with a full load of fuel, I probably wouldn't get any higher than 24,000. The aircraft is notoriously lazy. very well with the airspeed here, we're up to 313 knots now, getting into some thinner air. 
I'm expecting that to drop off but once we get around 24,000 feet. You never get this kind of performance if you're carrying a significant amount of fuel. Feet on our way up to 23,000, and uh, at this point, we have to keep an eye on our airspeed. It's uh, beginning to drop off a little bit there. Part of that is the aircraft slowing down, part of it is we're getting into thinner air, unless air falling over the wings shows the uh, lower airspeed. This is where this aircraft has two different personalities. Uh, flying light as we are today with low, light low fuel. We'll probably be able to do this climb right up to uh, cruising altitude, possibly reducing our climb rate a bit, but we won't have to level right out. If I were climbing with uh, a full load of fuel, I'd be lucky if I got up to 24,000 feet before I'd have to level out. It's a very different aircraft depending on how, how far you plan on flying and how much fuel you load. Obviously, in real life, you would never see this aircraft do a short flight like the one I'm doing today from San Francisco to uh, Salt Lake City. It's way too short a flight for it to be economical, especially given the uh, thirsty nature of this aircraft. mention here is uh, if I were flying heavy uh, with was full of fuel, there's no way I'd ever be able to maintain 1,800 feet per minute regardless of altitude. Most you would get would be 1,500 feet per minute. This is actually the first time I've flown this aircraft with uh, such a small load of fuel. My previous flights have been around 50% of 
Obviously, the aircraft has very different characteristics depending on the fuel you load. As far as range goes with the aircraft, uh, according to my calculations and the public specifications, the range is supposed to be around 9,000 nautical miles. I currently have the aircraft. Uh, with an estimated range of around 8,300 nautical miles. But that range would, it would increase as I burned off fuel. So initially, we wanted the range to be below the specified range, but not too much so that you're way off. As you burn fuel, the aircraft becomes lighter, the engines have to work, don't have to work so hard, and your fuel economy gets a bit better. Although the range initially is a little bit low, by the time I got about half to halfway to the extended range of this aircraft, I would be burning less fuel. At the end of the day, it would work out to be close to 9,000 9, nautical miles. Options here. I'm just going to reduce the uh, climb right here a little bit. Preparing to level out. I'm going to switch over to Mach speed here and we'll set that to Mach 1.82. It's a typical cruising speed for this aircraft. It has a maximum speed of Mach 24, but uh, very seldom you would ever use that and reduce to uh, wasting fuel. multifunction display here we have a way to go before we get to our destination approximately uh, 35 minutes to find time so we'll pick it up with you when we get within range of uh, Salt Lake City and we'll go over the uh, descent approach and landing we'll talk to you in a little while to our video. We're currently 165 nautical miles from Salt Lake City, Utah. Flying at flight level 320, Mach 0.82. Winds are 324 degrees at 17 knots. Skies have been clear most of the trip. A few low level cloud cover here and there, but nothing significant. Pretty uneventful flight.
aircraft had performed much as expected, no uh, surprises so far. You look at the uh, back end display here, at Mach 0.82 at 32,000 feet, I'm only using 76% thrust, so I could easily go faster than this if I wanted to. I could probably climb a lot higher than this if I wanted to. But where this is such a short flight, there's no point in going any higher. I don't want to run the risk of uh, overfeeding the aircraft by going too fast, so stay on the conservative side and hopefully everything will work out just the way we want it to. Currently 150 nautical miles from Salt Lake Center City, Utah. Expecting uh, instructions from air traffic control at any moment to begin our descent. Lake City, Utah is kind of a double-edged sword. If you're coming in from the west, it's not too bad of an airport to get into. Um, you're coming in over the uh, lake itself, and uh, it's a matter of lining up for the runway and coming in for final. However, if you're approaching the airport from the east, which is not the case today, you have to come in over the mountains and uh, make a very steep descent as you uh, Line up for final approach, and it's a bit of a tricky approach if you're coming in from the east. Winds have uh, climbed a little bit, uh, almost due north at uh, 23 knots.
currently uh, 115 nautical miles from our destination. Winds are 356 oh, degrees at 24 knots. Five, nine, Ground speed of 479 knots. Not unusual to see an Airbus A340-500 carries uh, get up to 39,000 feet on a long distance flight. You wouldn't do that on a shorter flight. Uh, if you were flying any significant distance, not unusual to see them climb up to high. Obviously, they'd have to burn off quite a bit of fuel before they could be able to get up to that altitude. They can do it. Getting a METAR report there and uh Singapore 782 descent and maintain flight level 250. Okay, so we're beginning our descent. I just got a METAR report It looks promising for very good uh, visibility on the approach. So we're descending at 1,800 feet per minute. I've set the auto throttle at 250 knots for now. I will reduce that a little bit more once we get to the lower altitudes. One of the uh, characteristics of this aircraft is it has a bit of a high angle of attack during cruise. And uh, that helps slow the aircraft down quite quickly when you're descending. that are familiar with flying Boeing aircraft, uh, one thing that's different with the Airbus uh, heavy aircraft, at least not so much the A320 class, but the A330, A340, A380, they don't have a lot of flap settings, and the flap settings are, are stretched far apart, so uh, you're not kept as busy, but uh, having said, you're, there's not as much flexibility in what you can set the flaps to. So you have to watch your, your flap speed limits very carefully and your altitude. And uh, based on those flap speed limits and your altitude, you engage the flaps when you need to. But you have to be careful not to lower the flaps to a setting that is uh, too low for the speed you're going, or you'll end up uh, your nose pointed at the ground. Coming up on 27,000 feet on our way down to 25,000. One. 
We're continuing our descent down to 15,000 feet. Maintaining 1,800 feet per minute for now. Once we get under 20,000 feet, you might see that airspeed uh, start to climb again. And before I got that instruction from air traffic control. Not unusual to see the airspeed climb a little bit as you approach 20,000 feet. We're getting into some thicker air, and uh, that thicker air is, means more airflow over the wings, and makes it appear like you're going faster, but in the same day you're going faster, it's just that you have more air flowing over the wings. Coming up on 18,000 feet now and already down to 15,000 feet. Turn left heading 025. 
program me in the eye on a shrink receiver 16 right 11.9 megahertz switch over navigation mode and we can turn off the gps navigation at this point and our course for runway heading 160 Coming up about 15,000 feet. At this point, I'm going to reduce my clock, my descent rate to uh, 1,500 feet per minute. I'm going to drop my uh, airspeed on the auto throttle down to 240 knots. Of course, all of this is in preparation for the uh, 250 knot speed limit at 10,000 feet. You can see on the uh, primary flight display because of those changes I made, we're under 250 now. Turn right heading 195, American Pacific, or 601. At this point, I can fly perhaps one in Airbus Lingo or eight degrees on the uh, indicator. Continue our descent down to 6,700 feet. Descend and maintain 6,700. Singapore 782. Salt Lake Center, King Air, November 39184 with you. King Air, November 39184, Salt Lake Center, Roger. Forty one nautical miles from the airport. The airport is actually off to our forward right. Metric pressure to three zero point zero seven inches mercury. the uh, GPS here and give you an idea of the uh, situation. Right here is the airport we're going to be landing at. This uh, symbol here represents us. We're going to be flying north of the uh, airport making a right-hand turn for the final. Check the radar here and see if there's any other aircraft in my vicinity. Seven five one eight is that 
from 9,000 feet on our way down to 6,700 feet. feet here, so I'm going to do this relatively shallow. Obviously not happy with how slow I'm descending, but I'm doing that on purpose. Leveling out at 6,000 feet. Airspeed 230 knots indicated airspeed. Outside. Aircraft has a very nice angle of attack.
taking our final turn to intercept the uh, IOLA system. indicated airspeed. I'll keep it there until I'm uh, locked onto the uh, localizer. Once the uh, localizer becomes active here and we'll be going to hurricane turn to final, I'll drop my landing gear. You don't want to drop your landing gear too early with this aircraft because uh, it creates drag and this aircraft has a fairly high angle of attack during landing and you don't want to end up going too slow. Seven ahead of me there is a bit of a concern. I hope keep an eye on him. And 200 feet above me, so he's not flying at the same altitude as I am. He'll be coming in on the same run line. Turning now, so I'm going to drop my landing gear. I reduce my airspeed down to approach speed, which is 165 knots. Looks like that 747 is coming into the same airport, but on a different runway. Twenty-six. That's thirty-two. You can see the uh, localizer is lining up in the center. Wide scope is coming down to meet it. Once the two center, we'll be on final approach. Stranger is an, actually an AI aircraft. You don't have the option of arming your spoilers to automatically deploy and touch down. So just keep that in mind once you get on the ground, you're going to deploy your spoilers manually.
one thousand. Two hundred feet above the ground, we'll uh, disengage the autopilot and auto throttle, and begin flaring the aircraft. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. Lifting up my nose, dropping my engines down to idle. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Main gear down, put your gears down, reverse thrusters. Orders are deployed. Reverse structure going until we get down to 60 knots ground speed. And then we'll apply the wheel brakes down to taxi speed. from San Francisco, I mentioned, uh, then I'll mention it again. You don't want to achieve uh, 10 knots ground speed with this aircraft. And uh, I find if you use a taxi gauge, if you're flying with a light load of fuel, uh, the taxi gauge will sometimes get above 10 knots, even though it's set to, to that. So, uh, when you're flying light on fuel, it's, you're better off to do the taxi manually and yeah, close eye on your ground speed while you're doing it. Early uh, tricky aircraft to taxi was because of the uh, long length of the aircraft. significant amount of body roll as well. It means you have to make your turns a little slower than you normally would. Scenery and saw for Salt Lake City uh, International, so uh, probably not, not looking like you would normally see. Notice I slowed the aircraft down to 10 knots after this turn. I want to be going much more than 10 knots on a 90 degree turn.
some uh, exaggerated the body rollers there. Um, in about uh, 15 knots, I was trying to make some course corrections, and the body was rolling quite a bit. I suppose I want to get to that building. We're running into it. At this point, I'll begin the shutdown procedure for the aircraft. Again, I didn't follow the whole uh, rules of the road, if you will, on this flight. It was more or less just a uh, Dry run, if you will, for the aircraft, uh, testing spike characteristics more than anything. Under normal circumstances, I would have paid more attention to uh, FCC rules. Point the aircraft is cold and dark. And that brings our video to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions for me, feel free to ask. I look forward to bringing you more videos in the future. Have a good day.